The Fair Media Council was established in 1979 as the Long Island Coalition for Fair Broadcasting. The group's original goal was to encourage more Long Island news coverage by New York City-based TV stations. Jackie Clement is the executive director of the organization. She says the goals of the Fair Media Council have expanded to include educational components by teaching media literacy. When I came along, which was 22 years later after the founding of the organization, it was what do we do with the organization to make it relevant for today? Unless you really focus on journalism or media in school, you're not taught anything about journalism or media. You're not taught how to become an educated news consumer and how to critique the news and how to understand that just because I read a story in one place doesn't mean that story is the same everywhere else. You know, and it doesn't mean all of the information is contained in that one story. There's a way to use news and media so that you actually build deductive reasoning skills and critical thinking skills, especially in children. So that's really become our focus over the years now. Uh, but we do also maintain the original mandate, which is to advocate for quality local news, um, simply because the public has a right to know. So we want to see the media covering serious issues, you know, things like where your tax dollars are going, you know, how are your politicians performing? Is there something happening in your community whether it's at the schools or the playgrounds where your kids are playing, that you need to know to make sure your community is safe and, and vibrant and competing with, you know, the rest of the region so that we maintain a high quality of life here. So that's pretty much what we're focused on now. They also teach local organizations and businesses how to be more media savvy. Basically, news coverage focuses on um, news that impacts the most amount of people. On Long Island, we have less people than New York City does, which explains why the bulk of their news focuses on New York. Um, so for Long Island to be able to get its stories out, they really need to be savvy in terms of how do I position this story? How do I broaden the appeal of it so that it's not just of interest to people on Long Island, but all of New York can see you know, the relevance of the story. What we deal with are areas where the media doesn't provide as much coverage because we're competing with um, somewhere else in the region, or there's simply not enough media based in that area to sustain uh, what the public needs to know, because there's simply too many stories going on. Um, there's more happening than is being covered. Um, so those are the areas where it's vitally important to educate people um, how to become part of the news ecology to get their message out, because it's information that's important for the community. Clement says one of the goals of the organization is to promote a healthy news diet by encouraging people to research multiple points of view on news story coverage. So what people tend to do is, you know, they'll go home at night, they'll flick on the television and they'll leave it on one station. They'll watch, you know, one of their favorite cable channels and that's where they get their news. Or they'll pick up the daily paper in the morning and they'll go first to the commentary section to read their favorite columnist. And then they say, oh yeah, I agree with that. Well, they didn't get the news to understand what was missing from that commentary to help them make up their own mind. They're just agreeing with someone else who, who as a columnist, their express job is to, you know, create a case for their own opinion. And by doing so, you naturally throw out facts that conflict with, you know, anything that would be against your opinion. So we want people to be able to um, find a variety. Um, not only in news, but uh, where the news is actually generated from. So, you know, if you want to watch Fox, that's fine. But I also, if you're watching Fox, I also want you to watch some CNN, just to see how the story may be different. And then I also want you to look at PBS to get the view from inside the country, and then look at something like the BBC to get the view from outside of the country, because they all offer different perspectives. And then once you've done that, then we can talk about how you actually feel about the story and what your opinion is. And Clement says it's important to get the background details from traditional print media sources as well as broadcast. We do want people to read more than they watch, because television basically updates people on news stories. You know, the assumption is made that you've already read the, read the story somewhere, whether it's online or in print, uh, which gives you the background and the details. Where television news is meant to give you the update, you know, the freshness of what just happened and how the story is changing. So if you're just watching television news as the bulk of how you're gathering your information, you're missing out on the whole background. Um, so it's very important that, you know, the reading element is making up much more of your news consumption time than watching the news. So we call it actually creating a healthy news diet, and it's something um, 
that we're trying hard in particular to get children to understand and create the habits while they're young um, so that they grow up using news to their advantage, you know, to use it to build a better life, to understand what's happening in the world, to understand other cultures. If we can create media savvy children, what we ultimately create are world class citizens. And that's really what, you know, the country in particular needs. Clement offered several solutions to becoming more media savvy and spreading your media message beyond Long Island. The first step towards the solutions are uh, first educating people on the issue itself. Uh, because information is something people just take for granted. You know, a lot of people will just pick up a newspaper in the morning or they'll turn on a television station and they don't do much research into, um, you know, that news outlet. Where if I'm going to buy a car or if I'm going to buy a refrigerator, I'm actually going to sit down and research, you know, what's the best model, what, what has the best features that I would want. Uh, people are willing to invest in decisions like that but yet the information um, that they consume, th they don't research. And that's interesting because that's what impacts their viewpoints and their opinions and basically what they think. So the most important uh, resource that they're using, they don't spend any time researching. So first we need to get them to recognize that um, this is something they need to spend a few minutes determining where news is coming from and whether or not they should be um, allowing that into their house. Because at the end of the day, anything the media provides is a service to the public. And when the public says you're not doing your job, that's a strong message to the media that they're missing the point. Clement says the media plays a big role in community life. The news media is vital to um, um, moving the society that we have here forward because it's the news media that actually provides the tapestry of keeping everyone together and getting the information out that people need to know so that um, they can respond to whatever problems are out there and start solving them. Because it's really the news media that is the, is the force that is supposed to be uncovering the problems within a community. What we also need to educate Long Islanders about, and particularly the business community, is there are a lot of things that happen on Long Island that are of issue not just to Long Island. And it's very much um, the mindset of that geographical barrier that Long Islanders talk to Long Islanders. Long Islanders need to learn to talk to people outside of the island. Because now part of the solution is you need to go to media outlets off of Long Island to get your message off of Long Island so that your voice is heard to a larger community and to those decision makers. So if people are talking to Patch.com, Patch is available. It's out there. You know, that's a great thing. But where else can I talk on Long Island where that information is actually going to travel? And how am I going to get it into the hands of the people who need to know that information the most? That's what needs to start driving people's decisions on what media outlets they're trying to get into. So if we can educate people to use those tools effectively, um, that would be a great benefit across the board for everybody involved um, so that the news does travel and the news is relevant, and people actually get the news they need to know. For more information about the Fair Media Council, you can check out their website, fairmediacouncil.org. Chris Kalora reporting.